whichever part of the world you are joining us from. The Global Council for the Promotion of International Trade is proud to host this global celebration of World MSME Day 2021. We have more than 35 speakers joining us today from more than 25 countries. We are really honored and grateful to all of you for accepting our invitation and joining us today. On behalf of GCPIT, I welcome you all to this wonderful evening. I'm Aparna Ji Kumar, the global co-chairperson of GCPIT and your host for this evening. To quote Henry Ford, coming together is a beginning, staying together is progress, and working together is success. And we believe this is just a beginning, and this will be a beautiful lifelong relationship between all of us, and we will be working together for supporting SMEs across the globe, and thereby creating a sustainable change in the society. As we all know, the United Nations General Assembly designated 27th June as Micro, Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Day in order to recognize the contribution that MSMEs have made to the implementation of Agenda 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Micro, Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises, or MSMEs, account for 90% of businesses, 60 to 70% of employment, and 50% of GDP worldwide. Today, on MSME Day 2021, almost 18 months after the onset of COVID-19 crisis, most countries are still grappling with the pandemic and its severe health and socioeconomic impacts, including lockdowns and the need to support those who have lost their jobs and livelihoods. Though at first it was a health crisis, it had unprecedented and serious impacts on all other aspects of how people communicate, work, produce, trade, consume, and live. The economic ramifications of the pandemic quickly became apparent and SMEs have been on the front lines. With workers and customers staying indoors and supply chains tested by shutdowns, the small companies that provide 70% of the jobs in countries around the world and about half of economic activity have been put under stress. A COVID-19 business impact survey done by ITC clearly tells us how the pandemic has affected the small and medium enterprises. Analysis of this data shows that the pandemic has strongly affected 55% of their respondents. Nearly two thirds of micro and small firms reported that the crisis strongly affected their business operations compared with about 40% of large companies. One fifth of SMEs said that, said that they risked shutting down permanently within three months. Service companies have been the hardest hit around the world. In accommodation and food services, for instance, 76% of the surveyed firms said that Partial and full lockdown strongly affected their business operations. 64 of women-led firms declared that the business operations were strongly affected and youth-led enterprises reported a high risk of closing. About 26% of youth-led firms said they risk shutting down permanently within three months compared to 18% for non-youth-led businesses. Many companies that are not registered with national authorities are small and have little cash on hand to finance themselves whenever operations are shut down. The survey also found that informal enterprises are 25% more likely to say that the pandemic is pushing them towards bankruptcy. All these data shows that as business support organizations, we have a key role to play. The reason for all of us coming together is to cooperate to create growth opportunities for companies, competitive advantage for a country, and help deliver economic, social, and environmental objectives. Businesses working together can reduce costs through shared procurement, create economics of, economies of scale, and access new opportunities by sharing knowledge and resources. As business support organizations, we all can benefit from each other's knowledge, convening power, and our credibility to represent micro and small businesses and make their needs known to policymakers and funders. In the last 18 months, the whole world shifted into digital platforms and teleworking, remote learning, teleconferencing, online health services, e-commerce, and digital payments, all these taught us that digital facilities will no longer be optional. As we are opening to the new world that has been reshaped by the pandemic, we all have to adapt to the new normal, a new normal of building and fostering resilience, digital transformation, inclusiveness, and sustainability. On the 75th anniversary of the United Nations and fifth anniversary of the adoption of the SDGs or the 2030 Agenda, which includes 17 global goals and features 169 related targets that aim to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure prosperity for all, let us make a promise to ourselves. We all have come together today. Let us all work towards creating possibilities, a world where no one is left behind. As Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it is done. Let's together create the change we wish to see in this world. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
So on this, on this auspicious day, we are proud to have India's number one business news channel owned and operated by the Times Network, ET Now, as our media partner. As they salute India's SMEs and MSMEs and startups who showed resilience during the crisis, we are proud to join hands with them. Let us watch a short video. Leaders of Tomorrow, India's longest and most definitive television platform for SMEs and startups. Pioneering and nurturing their dreams into reality and recognizing true leaders who fuel momentum. Leaders of Tomorrow Awards and Conclave is back in Season 9. To salute India's SMEs, MSMEs and startups across industries and sectors who not only survived but saw revival and thrived during the pandemic. Have you shown resilience during this crisis? Have you innovated against all odds? Nominate yourself and win the chance to be felicitated at Leaders of Tomorrow's illustrious awards. Register yourself now. Entries open. Presented by IDFC First Bank. That is amazing work. Thank you so much for joining us and supporting us in this mission. We are starting with the future of SMEs and trade in GCC and Middle East. The session will be led by Ms. Madhumita Naik, Madhusmita Naik, who is the Director General of GCPAD UAE. She is a Senior Strategy and Business Excellence Officer at Ports Customs at Free Zone. Over to you, Madhusmita, for leading the session, the future of SMEs and trade in GCC and Middle East. Thank you very much, Aparna. A very good morning, afternoon, and evening to everyone across the globe listening to us. Today, on the occasion of celebrating World MSME Day 2021, on behalf of the entire team of GCPIT, myself, Madhusmita Nayak, the Director General of UAE, would like to welcome our guest of honor, His Excellency Thomas Jaleski, the Chairman of the Board of the Private Office of His Highness Sheikh Ahmad bin Faisal Al Qasimi UAE. With his passion about business environment since he was young, he has developed opportunities for several other ambitious entrepreneurs and companies in the UAE. And currently, he has been the driving force behind the private office and making it one of the best royal office in the Middle East. It's an honor to have you, sir. I'd like to welcome next our guest speaker, Mr. Dunstan Pereira, CEO to the private office of His Highness Sheikh Ahmad bin Faisal Al Qasimi. Mr. Dunstan, with his vast experience in business excellence and global relationship, he has taken up this challenging assignment with the private office to make it one of the most acclaimed and accepted business organization in the world. He's a good humanitarian who is serving as an ambassador to about 10 NGOs across the globe. Wishing you all the best, sir, for such good activities and it's a proud moment to, uh, for us to have you on board. Our second guest speaker, Mr. Mazen Fakridin, who is a business developer and livelihood expert specialized in MSME startup, leadership, entrepreneurship, rural development based out of Lebanon. Mr. Mazen had worked extensively with local and international NGOs for more than 20 years in livelihood and MSME's development. He supported more than 7,000 businesses in their startup phase and trained more than 12,000 entrepreneurs on business development and business expansion. It's a whole lot of number, easy to say, difficult to manage. It's a proud moment to, uh, for us to have you, Mazen. Now coming to MSME sector, it's a very vital importance as the region moves towards becoming a hub for enterprise ventures and among the best entrepreneurial ecosystem in the world with advanced digital solutions and massive economic stimulus plans that we have showcased during pandemic. In UAE, the Ministry of Economy estimated that the SME sector represents more than 98% of the total number of companies operating in UAE and it contributes towards 52% of the non-oil GDP and aiming towards to increase by 60% by 2021. Furthermore, the ministers, the government officials, authorities, free zones are joining hands together, offering various forms of sponsorship 
and partnership that covers all stages of building and developing SMEs, led businesses and promising projects across the globe. Saying that, my first question to His Excellency, sir, talking about Expo 2020, which is the talk of the world now, and as being the pioneer to ease of doing business, how it will open doors to all SMEs across the globe. Over to you, sir. So actually, his mic is muted. If you can unmute. Thank Sorry, you. Me? Yeah. yeah. Now it's okay. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be inside the platform today to meet all the business people, and I'm humble and honored. Dubai Export will broadcast small, medium organization globally. I will empower them to the business while using Dubai as a platform. There are never ending opportunity for example, the women sectors, which uh, inspires up and coming business women to SME grant, grants for new companies. Dubai Expo is the right place to be. As the chairman of the Royal Office, Sheikh Ahmed, Vince Faisal al Qasimi, SME can also help which Refining companies, I which providing and team, and team advisor who will be guide them and how to how to do business in UAE. It doesn't matter what your company is dealing with. No matter is a manufacturing distributor on retail. We will empower to you to the business in UAE and help your business grow. I appreciate everybody for their attention. Join us in the expo. I will personal welcome you. Let's make a better change today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. I think the world has heard you that your doors are open for all the SMEs, whatever matter doesn't matter. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, now coming back to Mr. Dunson, can you please highlight on the future outlook of SMEs and the trade that we have in GCC and UA in particular? Good evening, everybody. As you rightly said, MSME is the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, if I have to put it in a very simple manner, it is like the blood vessels in our body, which is supplying blood to the heart, which is the main business hub. So SMS, MSMEs are there everywhere in the country, in the small and nook and corner. And in GCC, if you see, 90% of the total business is being contributed by MSMEs. And Almost 1.5 million MSMEs are there as of 2020, and which is likely to grow up by another 10 to 15 percent. And the government of GCC is also providing a lot of opportunities and a lot of uh, government reforms in order to support MSMEs. As part of the private office, the amount of response or the amount of queries that we are getting on a daily basis from these MSMEs are phenomenal. And you, you can take it in any sector, whether it is fintech, whether it is crypto, whether it is blockchain, or whether it is in a brick and mortar scenario, we are getting up to number of requests on a daily basis, and we are finding it extremely difficult to shortlist because each and everything is superb. The ideas are great, and it is just that they need a little push to establish themselves in this country and support GCC in their growth. And as our honorable chairman said, we at the private office are extremely delighted to support these MSMEs in whatever way we can. And we will, we have a team of advisors who will be guiding them throughout their journey. It is not that we will just take them on board and then ask them to do the business. No, 
we will be guiding them throughout their journey and ensure that they emerge successful in each of their respective areas. Secondly, if you see uh, the MSME sector, not only in GCC, if you see in any part of the world, whether it is India, whether it is Africa or anything, they have a social responsibility towards the country because they are the one who are going to come emerge from the rural in rural part of the world of, of many the third development countries so i think they have a very huge role in supporting their respond their respective country economy and make sure that the country grows a, a three or four times ahead and again when you, when we talk about uh, uh, msmes during the pandemic season we have seen that many MSMEs have emerged very successful, especially because of the online platforms, because they were able to sell their products in the online platforms, and that helped them in growing their business many folds. So on one side, when we say pandemic has affected the business, on the other side, I'm sure most of the MSMEs will say, no, it has helped us grow our business <coughs> many folds. So, I, I think that this is an excellent platform and uh, as entrepreneurs, you need to put in your thoughts, you need to put in your efforts and make sure that your idea is one of the best and we at the private office are very much inclined to support each one of you and we welcome you all to UAE and to the GCC. I'm, I'm sure once you come to UAE, you will be able to expand into GCC. And we are all looking forward to see you that you be part of us and we all grow together in the coming years. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Dunstan. And as the world has witnessed what UA leaders say they do, and they have proved that. And with that note, I really want to thank from the Royal Office, Open Jorts, and I'm pretty sure that after your talk, you'll be getting more queries from now on. Thank you so much. And uh, going to our third panelist, Mr. Mezen Fakri, then, wow, what a, how many support you have given to entrepreneurs and how, what a ecosystem you have built. Saying that, if you can highlight uh, the future outlook of SMEs and trade in Middle East. Hello, everybody. Thank you uh, for inviting me to this wonderful event. Uh, uh, I'm really uh, excited uh, to know you all and uh, to be in contact with you and welcome you in my country, Lebanon, and in the Middle East, uh, of course. Uh, the future of uh, MSMEs in, uh, uh, in the Middle East, uh, let me uh, put it in another way. Uh, usually, uh, entrepreneurs, they make the future. We do not have a future for MSME, SMEs. The entrepreneurs, they have the future. The entrepreneurs, they, they, they will decide their future. But they have to uh, uh, support them in finding the opportunities in the Middle East. And there's no equal future for SMEs in the Middle East because of many reasons. Uh, when we talk about Middle East, we talk about 21 country. And, uh, and we, we cannot forget the geopolitical that is affecting uh, the relation between these countries. We cannot forget about the events that happened uh, uh, 15 years ago in the Middle East in some countries. Every time we try to support MSMEs, they fail after a few years because we have unstable, unpredictable unpredict future for the MSMEs. So I prefer that we support the entrepreneurs in the Middle East, in all these 21 country to, to find their way for the future, especially women entrepreneurs because they were really suffering in some countries. Uh, maybe in the GCC, it's a bit different. Maybe now the government in the GCC have different approach 
toward the private sector and toward the, uh, uh, the SMEs in the region. But the GCC countries are six countries only, but we have 21 other countries. We have vulnerable entrepreneurs in the 21 country in the Middle East. We cannot measure uh, or we cannot give uh, uh, equal a future for all the entrepreneurs in the Middle East. But we can do equal opportunities for all of them because uh, uh, I think uh, we will have a great opportunities from now till the 2025 in the Middle East in some countries. And uh, uh, I want to say something about the future of SMEs. It's, it's, it's not to fail, of course. We don't want to SMEs to fail, but we want to fail now. We want the entrepreneurs to fail now. And this is the future of entrepreneurs because they will learn from failing. But we, we have to be all of us next to them. And we have to link and we have to create the Middle East platform for entrepreneurs. Aside to the geopolitical situation in the Middle East, we have to put the events that are affecting negatively the uh, uh, women entrepreneurs or any entrepreneur in the Middle East and create this supportive platform uh, uh, among each other in the, in the Middle East. Of course, I'm very optimistic about the future of MSEs because uh, 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 there is always a new accelerators in the Middle East. There is always a new programs. Uh, we have a big market. We have uh, uh, consumers and uh, the future of the uh, SMEs in the Middle East is going to rely more on the local resources. Even now, big companies, international companies are coming to the Middle East to produce uh, 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 local products and to recruit uh, uh, local uh, resources. Online platforms, uh, it's also uh, going to boom in the coming uh, few years. The digital uh, literacy and financial literacy, they will be more uh, free in the coming two years, there will be more free uh, uh, services to uh, micro and small, medium enterprises. Many NGOs, many companies now after the, the conflicts in, in the Middle East in, in specific countries, uh, and economic crisis like Lebanon uh, are supporting uh, SMEs for free, like they are uh, helping them to switch from uh, physical uh, selling to online selling and provide them with websites and everything for, for free. So the Middle East is ready to receive uh, the support from around the world, the support from big organizations, and is ready to establish the Middle East platform. My advice to entrepreneurs, if they don't want to fail in the future in the MENA region or the Middle East region, is that they have to uh, diversify their currency and their cash flow. They have to diversify their uh, 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 the currency, and they have to put uh, a step outside the Middle East. Uh, we have to support the entrepreneurs that are uh, ready to move forward and go outside the Middle East. We cannot just let the uh, entrepreneurs focus on the future of the Middle East. Let them be international. I, I also uh, uh, advise entrepreneurs and I advise everybody working with SMEs in the Middle East and in other countries is to uh, support the vulnerable uh, uh, SMEs, entrepreneurs to have different uh, financial management, financial approach to support them in digital literacy and financial literacy. 
the, the, uh, the, the level of education in the Middle East is one of the main uh, uh, issues that faces uh, the livelihood of many entrepreneurs and the income generating activities because we do not have equal future and equal economic uh, standards in the Middle East. Because as I said, if you look at the GCC and if you look at the other countries in the Middle East, it's different. We cannot think the same uh, for the Middle East. We should take each case by case and each country by country if we really want to support SMEs in the Middle East. There's no programs in many companies by the private sector to provide capitals for entrepreneurs in the Middle East. Maybe only 7% from the entrepreneurs, they, they, uh, uh, get, they have the access to uh, uh, have grants, uh, uh, to have loans or capitals from the banks. So we have to encourage the private sector and this is what's happening actually now, because the private sector discovered that they cannot live without the SMEs. And this is very important for the competition in the future, because there, if there is no competition, they will be not be successful in the private sector. There should be always competition, and this competition should come out from our entrepreneurs, our vulnerable entrepreneurs, that they have innovation ideas, that they have business ideas, we need to stand next to them. So thank you so much for inviting me to this event. Thank you, Mr. Mazin, for such an insightful insights, uh, starting from competitive advantage to diversifying, to customizing the presence in each country and how we can all collaborate to get the best practice and go out of the comfort zone to see what where we can explore. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm so lucky to have all the three excellent panelists on board for GCC and Middle East. And we all together welcome the entire world just to visit us and take the best out of it. Over to you, Aparna, for the closing note. Thank you so much, uh, Madhu. That was an awesome session and uh, I think uh, we are all set to uh, visit Dubai during the Dubai Expo. Uh, in between I had a few technical glitches, uh, I don't know what is happening but still uh, that was awesome to have you uh, wonderful speakers and uh, we are really really honored uh, <laughs> to, uh, that you joined us today. Uh, thank you so much Madhu for uh, hosting it very uh, very wonderfully. Uh, I think uh, yeah uh, we will all, uh, I think the whole world is ready to come to Dubai, right? Uh, thank you so much for your hospitality. Thank you so much for your invitation. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Aparna. And you got invitation from the Royal Office. What all we need. Yes, exactly. What else do we need? Uh, thank you so thank much. You. Yeah, I think uh, so. That was our uh, session on future of trade and uh, uh, in GCC and in. and uh, now let's move on to the next uh, session. Future of SMEs in Asia Pacific. <laughs>